Let's now go to Pseudomonas infection. Pseudomonas infection is deadly in three cases. Cystic fibrosis, severe burns, and neutropenia. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the most common pseudomonas infection. It's a gram-negative bacillus and causes opportunistic infection in the following. So when you have this uh, skin breakage, when you use catheters, and when you are neutropenic, like for example, the cases of those who undergo chemotherapy. So determinant of pathogenicity, pili and adherence proteins, they bind to epithelial cells and lung mucin and express endotoxin. Alginate is very important since it is a mucoid polysaccharide, mucoid polysaccharide that forms a slimy biofilm that protects the organism from antibodies, antibiotics, and complement system. This is actually a very important uh, virulence factor of the Pseudomonas infection and is the deadly, uh, it's actually the, uh, the reason why in cystic fibrosis, some of them die. It's actually because of this one. Very resistant to antibiotics in the antibodies and, uh, and even complement system of immune reaction. Exotoxin A would uh, like in diphtheria toxin, they would inhibit protein synthesis. As e exoenzyme S, uh, ADB ribosylates RAS protein and other G proteins that regulate cell growth and metabolism. So they inhibit cell growth and metabolism. Phospholipase C, they lyse RBC. C is to C, RBC. Yeah. And then for elastase, they degrade. IgG and uh, extracellular matrix proteins. And this is very important in uh, invasion and keratitis in cornea. Iron is a containing compounds which can actually cause to cause um, vascular lesions. For the infections, so what I said earlier, for severe burns, it can cause sepsis. Meningitis, also form of... Uh, P. Eruginosa. And what is important is uh, necrotizing pneumonia. Necrotizing pneumonia is actually distributed in a fluidly pattern. This has a uh, striking pill, necrotic center, and the hemorrhagic per periphery. For otitis externa, it presents otitis externa, like that of a swimmer's ear, but um, when you are diabetic, it can be, uh, otitis externa can be severe. For eye infection, it's actually for uh, corneal keratitis in contact lens wearer. So, the, the solution in which the contact lens are put can be infected with pseudomonas and can present with eye infection. Usually, a uh, patient would present with eyes or corneal lesions that are green in color. For eczema, gangrenosum, uh, we have to remember this. This is actually one of the most uh, frequently asked questions in exams. Uh, these are lesions in patients with skin burns. In skin burns, it proliferates widely and penetrating deeply into the skin uh, and veins and spreads hematogenously. So, necrotic and hemorrhagic oval skin lesions, which are well demarcated, is actually present in eczema, eczema gangrenoso. Also important, which is not written here, is endocarditis and osteomyelitis, especially in IV drug users. Pathologic. Uh, findings of pseudomonas infection. Wait. Here. This is um, a mass of uh, organized cloud. The tissue with bluish haze actually concentrated in the blood vessel walls where host cells undergo coagulative necrosis. So when you see a blue haze, uh, this is actually a characteristic of um, pseudomonas aeruginosa. This is accompanied by thrombosis and or hemorrhage. So the triad would be prevascular blue haze plus thrombosis plus hemorrhage side suggestive of the aeruginosa infection. However, the prevascular blue haze is not pathognomonic, pathognomonic though highly suggestive of pseudomonas infection. Chancroid is caused by Hemophilus ducreyi. Hemophilus ducreyi is actually a painful. My mnemonics here. Ducreyi. 
painful. You cry when you have to cry. It is one of the most common causes of genital ulcers in Africa and South Southeast and Asia. It manifests as painful genital ulcer or soft, soft chancre. In contrast to syphilis, this syphilis has hard chancre and painless. But this one is soft and is painful. Pathologic findings in female, there's chancroid, usually in the vagina or periurethral, periurethral area. The lesion is in the mons pubis or the base is covered by virulent discharge. So this is, uh, this is female genitalia. This is uh, the primary, when the primary lesion erodes, it produces an irregular, as you can see, an irregular ulcer. And there is a yellow, gray, shaggy exudate on the base of the lesion. In the males, it will present with a painful lesion on the penis usually. Histologic findings. Ulcer of the chancroid is not injurated. The base of the ulcer, again, is covered by shaggy yellow, um, shaggy yellow exudates. And then there is a dense lymphoplasma plasmacytic inflammation and is present beneath the granulation tissue. So, the chancroid contains a superficial zone of neutrophilic debris. For granuloma annulare or donovanis, an important uh, cause is by Klebsiella granulomatis. It is minute encapsulated cocobacillus. If untreated, it may develop an elephantiasis of external genitalia. The mode of transmission is sexual contact. Pathology caused by Kalimatobacterium donovani or Klebsiella granulomatis. Unlike the Ducreyi, it is painless. Genit it, it, cause, it causes painless genital ulcers with rolled borders. So very... Uh, it, even though it's painless, just like in syphilis, it has rolled borders and friable base. Surrounding granulation tissue is soft and sharply demarcated. So, the sharply demarcated areas of granulation tissue bleeds easily. So, as you can see here, this is, even though this looks like some sort of a very painful um, lesion or ulcer, it's actually painless. Uh, this is seen grossly as protuberant soft painless mass, the granulation tissue. So this is the granulation tissue that is uh, seen grossly as protuberant soft painless mass. Histopathology, there is marked epithelial hyperplasia at the borders of the ulcer. At the borders of the ulcer, there is marked uh, epithelial hyperplasia called pseudoepitheliomastosis hyperplasia. Uh, the dense dermal inflammatory inflammatory infiltrate with small abscesses are present. Um, diagnosis would be the Donovan bodies. This is um, diagnostic for the granuloma inguinale. So you can see here, this is a minute encapsulated cocobacilli in macrophage. So granuloma inguinale or C. Donovan. For mycobacterium, mycobacterium is a slender of the gait aerobic and non-encapsulated, non-sporeforming, slowly growing um, bacteria. It's actually acid fast and the reason why it's acid fast is because of the mycolic acid. Um, the meaning of acid fast bacteria is that they will retain the stain even with the mixture of acid or alcohol. They are weakly gram-positive and can cause diseases such as tuberculosis, and, uh, mycobacterium avium intracellular complex, and leprosy. Modes of transmission would be um, for M. tuberculosis, that's droplet inhalation, for M. bovis, that's ingestion of contaminated milk of the cow, and then M. Avium intracellular complex or MAC. 
the most common species causing disseminated mycobacterial infection in AIDS patient. So AIDS patient, avium. Pathogenesis. This is how it, you see the mycobacteria. It will attach to the alveolar macrophage. And then eventually there will be seeding at the multiple sites. So the primary pulmonary tuberculosis of more than three weeks, the alveolar macrophage would then bind to the T cell, and the T cell would uh, be activated to Th1, and then with the help of the interferon gamma, it would become an activated macrophage. At here in the Th1, there is already tuberculin positivity or hypersensitivity. Positive PPD signifies T-cell mediated immunity. This is a T-cell mediated immunity uh, to mycobacterium antigen. So, however, it doesn't differentiate infection and disease. So, there's a granuloma formation at the end of the diagram. Pathogenesis, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction through man Manto skin test or the PPD skin test. You see... A cord factor, this is very important for mycobacterium tuberculosis, it inhibits uh, polymorphonuclear leukocyte migration and elicits granuloma formation. This is the one that elicits granuloma formation because it attacks what? Mitochondrial membrane. It damages the respiration and oxidative phosphorylation. The LAM is the one that inhibits the macrophage activation. So, either of the two, it's, this can be asked, cord factor, and this can be asked, lamb or lipo arabimo, arabino manan. So, here, if TH1 response is mounted, TH1 maturation by IL-12 would produce IFN or interferon gamma. It is the Th1 that activates macrophage to kill the bacteria. T cell becomes Th1 via the IL-12. So that's the only important thing to remember. Clinical features of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. So the source, the infectious person with undiagnosed cat cavitary um, lesion. Cavitary TB would sneeze or cough, etc. and would release the bacilli in droplets of saliva, suspended air, and then would enter the alveoli and initiate infection in the recipient. Primary infection. So, in most cases, primary infection is contained. So, if it's contained, uh, primary tuberculosis, but in others, the primary tuberculosis is progressive. Progressive primary TB often resembles acute bacterial pneumonia with lower and middle lobe consolidation, hilar adenopathy, and pleural effusion. Cavitation is rare, especially, however, it is possible in immunosuppressed. Cavitation is rare, especially in immunosuppressed. So, lymphohematogenous dissemination may result in tuberculous meningitis. So, in, in there is a uh, lymph node involvement, there will be uh, a possibility of tuberculous meningitis and miliary tuberculosis. In the secondary pulmonary tuberculosis, um, here, there, it involves the apex of the upper lobes of the lungs. There's apical uh, disease with cavitation, usually cassiation, in the primary, but in secondary, there's cassiation, there's scar, and there's also cavitation. Cassiation, cavity, cassiation, cavity, scar. Uh, cavitation occurs readily because of the erosion of cavities into the lungs and makes it an important source of infection because the patient now coughs sputum with bacteria. The localized secondary tuberculosis uh, may be asymptomatic or insidious onset. In the primary TB, what is important is the uh, development of gonfocus. Gonfocus is a great white inflammation. Wait, I'll show you a picture. 
This is actually a gone complex. A gone focus develops and this is a gray-white inflammation usually with consolidation and central caseous necrosis. Thus, its center undergoes caseous necrosis. Uh, the gone focus is 1 to 1.5 cm area of gray-white inflammation with consolidation. That's what you should remember with gone focus. If there is parenchymal lesion and lymph node involvement, it will become gone complex. This is a gone complex. In most case, cases, lesion heals and gone complex undergoes progressive fibrosis and radiologically detectable calcification or Ranke complex. However, it's not always calciation. This appears white because of the TB granuloma in the lymph node. Another diagnostic test or diagnose, uh, another definitive diagnosis would be when you see a horseshoe pattern. This is the horseshoe. This is the horseshoe. That one. A horseshoe pattern of Langhans giant cells. This is actually a tubercle at the low power objective. Here you see this is a lymph node with um, a histopathology of a tuberculosis and this is a central cassation surrounded by epithelioid and multinucleated giant cells. These are um, central cassation. See, it's hyalinized. For the primary TB, it is not necessarily that it also, it immediately has cassation. Some of them may or may not have central cassation. For the presence of epithelioid cells, yeah, as what I said earlier, the presence of a horseshoe pattern, Langhans giant cells. So here, acid fast stain. When you need a definitive diagnosis, culture is the standard, but when it's just an, a presumptive diagnosis, you can use the acid fast stain or acid fast bacilli. What is the fate of primary TB? Some of them becomes uh, become healed and become calcified 90% of the time. However, some of them progress to TB or spread contiguity and then become a disseminated TB. Disseminated TB is actually miliary TB wherein there is a hematogenous spread of TB throughout the body. And it presents numerous minute yellow-white foci that looks like birds. It's actually miliary. It's actually mil, mil, milli, miliary comes from the word bird seeds. It's actually the etiology, I think. For the secondary TB, what's important is the site, the apex. Apex is important because it is, uh, there's a high uh, oxygen tension. So the, since the bacilli is an aerobic, are aerobic, they tend to be on the higher part of the lungs since it's more saturated with oxygen. Two important features features in secondary tuberculosis, there's cassation and cavities. So again, in secondary tuberculosis, there's already cassation and cavities. But in primary TB, it does not necessarily have that uh, the cassation already. It may or may not have central cassation. What are the organs that are resistant to TB? Sometimes this is... Uh, this is as heart, the striated muscle, the thyroid, and the pancreas. They do not get, or they do not, they are not imp uh, infected by the TB bacilli. When the blood vessels erode, some of them may cough up blood, may result to hemoptysis. In this one, the isolated TB organ. The reason why I highlight this is because uh, some of the TB may appear in any organ or tissue for meninges. can be TB meninges, kidney, or renal, meningi uh, renal tuberculosis, adrenal tuberculosis, which often leads to Addison's disease, and then bone may lead to osteomyelitis, fallopian tubes may, live, may lead to salpingitis, and vertebrae. The very important one would be lymphadenitis. 
lymphadenitis occurs in the cervical region and you have the term scrofula. Scrofula is the most common extrapulmonary manifestation of the cervical uh, lymphadenitis. In the what what type of tuberculosis secondary? So remember, lymphadenitis, uh, most common manifestation would be scrofula. There is a cervical lymph node affected under what tuberculosis secondary? For the diagnosis of TB, uh, this is actually a picture of a miliary TB of the skin. As you can see, it's like a, a numerous, this numerous minute white, yellow white fossa that looks like bird seeds. It looks like bird seeds. It's miliary TB already. Diagnosis of TB, we use PCR, AFB. So, culture is the gold standard. It's actually, culture actually for 10 weeks. So, if you have, if the presumption is TB, and yet you have the culture, and then after 2 days, the bacilli already grew, grew on the agar, that is not TB because TB grows on the agar in more or less 10 weeks, not about 2 days. So that's the difference. So that's how you, um, that's how that's how you know it's not TB. MAC or Mycobacterium avium intracellular complex. It is due to in Mycobacterium avium and Mycobacterium intracellular. Uh, the most common cause of disseminated Mycobacterial infection in AIDS patient. There is a CD40 cell count of less than 60 cells per micrometer cube cubic micrometer here there is a um, negative PPD test it's very important so even though you think it's a uh, mycobacteria but you had a PPD test or manto test and it appears negative think of MAC and it's also EFB negative there will be absence of granulomas due to pure, poor immune response. The hallmark of MAC is patient with HIV is abundant AFB within the macrophages. This is a picture of um, patient with AIDS and there is MAC infection. For the uh, in MAC, you can also see enlarged mesenteric lymph nodes. There is presence of, uh, here, presence of yellowish pigmentation to organs like lymph nodes, liver, spleen, but in this case, lymph node in the mesentery. Secondary to large number of organisms in swollen macrophage. The hallmark of, again, the hallmark of uh, micro, uh, mycobacterium avium would be macrophage filled with acid fast bacilli. Now we go to the last one, which is leprosy. Leprosy is caused by Mycobacterium leprae. It also causes, uh, it also causes type four hypersensitivity uh, with lepromid. Lepromid is a um, an enzyme that you detect in uh, one in a type of leprosy called tuberculoid leprosy. However, in a more severe form, you do not get to see the lepromid. It's not written here. So, BCG, confer, uh, vaccination confers some protection against the mycobacterium leprae. Very important also, it's actually found in the foot pads of nine-banded armadillos or mice. So, when you see armadillos, you run. So, tuberculoid leprosy, it's actually a benign form of leprosy. The patient presents with dry, scaly lesions with um, decreased or no sensation at all. There would be focal areas of skin pallor and anesthesia due to involvement of the nerves. Lesions have depressed, pale centers, but with central healing. There is 
um, asymmetric involvement of large peripheral nerves. Basic lesion is granuloma. Scanty or absent bacteria can be found in the granulomas. And there will be the reason why the patient with tuberculoid leprosy presents with granuloma is because they have a strong T-cell mediated immunity, which, do, which you do not see in the more severe form, the promatous leprosy. Here, there is a presence of Th1 associated with, in the tuberculoid, presence of Th1 associated with production of IL-2 and interferon gamma. For lepromatous leprosy, it's a severe form. It's also known as anergic leprosy because of the unresponsiveness of the host immune, res uh, host immune response. Because as I said, if the tuberculoid leprosy has a strong t cell mediated um, immunity, this one, the severe form, does not have or may have weak THS, TH1 response. However, some of them may increase we have an increase in TH2 response. For lepromatous, there's widespread invasion of Schwann cells, endoneural and perineural macrophage damaging the peripheral nervous system. There's a disfiguring nodularity of the skin, eventually uh, presenting a leonin fasci. Note the cooler areas of the skin, like that of the ears, the lobes, feet, are more severely affected than the others, like armpit, abdomen. Peripheral nerves here are affected late. Peripheral nerves like ulnar and peroneal nerve. So what we can see in the skin biopsy would be large lipid-laden macrophage or lepra cells. So if you if you if you have in the exam question like what do you see in the skin biopsy of a Lepromatous leprosy patient, you will see lepra cells or macrophage, lipid laden macrophage filled with masses of acid fast bacilli. So that is characteristic of the severe form of leprosy. So if you are asked, where do you see globi? Do you see it in tuberculoid or do you see it in lepromatous? See it in the lepromatous. There is uh, also, although not written here, it's the testis involvement which can lead to infertility. Here, there's a presence of granuloma beneath the skin with scant or absent bacteria. The gross appearance of tuberculoid leprosy, there is initially a flat red lesion that may enlarge with irregular shapes and it may have a pale center. Again, central healing and depressed pale centers and can be found on trunk and distal extremities. Compared to uh, leonin fasci, uh, it affects most of the cooler areas of the body, like the nose, the eyes. For the pathology of lepromatous leprosy, you will see no granuloma. Again, the reason why there is no granuloma in lepromatous leprosy is because there is weak THS, TH1 is one, and since we know that TH1 is the one that activates uh, interferon gamma to, to mount a uh, hypersensitivity response forming granuloma, there will be no granuloma, but with plenty um, acid fast bacilli. You can also see um, lipid laden macrophage with globi or uh, masses of acid fast bacilli. So as I was saying a while ago, this is a leonin fasci, characteristic of lepromatous leprosy. There will be bilateral lesions, symmetric distribution. You can see the, the, the face is, uh, the affected areas are the nose. Here you can see almost obliterated eyebrows. You can see the forehead. You can see nodular lesions or forming marked foldings on the face. That's all for...